from God's grace. You know, when we were younger, we used the acronym God's riches at Christ's expense. Simply yes. meaning that grace is there because of Jesus. Without him, we couldn't receive God's grace. And without him, we certainly couldn't receive God's mercy. I was just looking as Elder was sharing and I was reading. And uh, right there in the book of Ephesians in chapter 2, uh, verse 4, just going to grab a piece of the eight part. I'm going to read the whole verse uh, from the NIV version. It reads, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 but because of his great love for us God who is rich in mercy ain't that something right there yeah. rich in mercy. Yeah. because of his great love for us God who is rich in mercy I just want to talk to you for a few minutes from the subject Lord have mercy Amen. Yes, sir. Lord have mercy Lord have mercy uh, there was a song uh, some 50 one, 52 years old now written by Marvin Gaye and uh, it was on the Inner City Blues album and it was around 1971 most of us know the two famous songs on that album What's Going On and uh we always heard that one on the radio. Mm -hmm. And it talked about what was going on in 1971. But if you listen to the words of it, it sounded like it's going on in 2023. Yes, yes. And in the song Mercy, Mercy Me, he said, things ain't what they used to be. Yes, <laughs> and I think everybody in the room can yes, testify yes, to the fact that things are not what they used to be. If we could just go back four years, life has changed again for us since 2019. Start 2020 in this new decade, everything changed again. And as Elder said earlier, people are meaner, and Deacon Harper said it, people are mean in today's world. People don't like to show mercy, but they want mercy. And Jesus said, if you don't show mercy, you won't be shown any mercy. I think that was in Matthew 7. He said that the same measure you meet it out, it'll be met to you again. And since God is rich in mercy, we ought to be rich in mercy towards one another. Jesus was a compassionate God. He, he was compassionate. That's why he healed the sick. That's why he raised the dead. And compassion is one of the words in the definition of mercy. Because Elio, which is mercy in the Greek, is compassion by divine grace. And that word grace is again. And so therefore, it's an act of kindness or favor. And God, the Bible says, his tender loving kindness is brand new every day. That means his mercy is new every single day because the text says he's rich in mercy. And since he's rich in mercy, Marvin Gaye said, where did all the blue skies go? Poison is in the wind that blows from the north and south and east. Whoa, mercy, mercy me. Yeah, things ain't what they used to be. And as we look at life, things are not what they used to be. Once upon a time when we were called color, we loved each other. We shared with each other. We had mercy on each other. Compassion, in other words, for each other. We could borrow a cup of sugar, Deacon Harper. We could borrow a stick of butter. We could borrow some flour. We could get caught anything. We used to leave our doors unlocked once upon a time when we were called color and nobody went up in nobody's house without permission. 
In fact, they left it unlocked, and if you needed something, they could tell you, oh, go in the house and get so-and-so. And you would go in and get what you asked for and leave out, and nothing else would be missing. Amen. But in 2023, you can't leave your door unlocked. You gotta lock your phone. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Your computer and your tablet in 2023 because people uh, jump on your phone. You know, folks don't even like to let you use their phone because they know people will be trying to get in your bank account, trying to sneak into your cash app and send themselves money out of your. You know, folks can do it nowadays. That's why people. Don't have mercy because the Bible says because iniquity shall abound in the towns of hell. The love of many is going to wax cold. And we live in a day where people don't love each other. Because they don't love themselves. And Marvin Gaye, I think he had something. 50 plus years ago, he said oil wasted on the ocean and upon our seas. Fish full of mercury. Which means we eat food that's contaminated. And if it weren't that we said, thank you, Holy Ghost, again, grace when we eat our food, we probably wouldn't be here, y'all. But it's God's grace and his mercy. So that's why, you know, we can say, he said in the song, oh, Jesus, yeah, mercy, mercy me. See, Marvin even knew who to call on. And some of y'all out there, I'm going to say this for free, you got to call on the name of Jesus. He'll have mercy on you. Even as a sinner, he'll have mercy and lead you so you can get saved. Yeah. As a backslider, he'll have mercy because he wants you to come back home. Yeah. And so therefore, even in the church, all of us still need more mercy. That's why the Bible says every day his mercies are brand new. He said things ain't what they used to be, y'all. Radiation underground and in the sky. Animals and birds who live nearby die. Look at what's going on. It's been going on over 50 years, y'all. Uh, and with all the, the, the technological advances that we have, people have lost common sense and common courtesy. With all the computers that we have, telephones and smart TVs and smart homes and smart cars, the Tesla drive itself. You know, we got all this technology, but we won't even speak to each other. We won't even help our brothers and our sisters the way we should. I see some people helping, and I thank God for those people that help, but most people aren't helping people. Most people in this generation are selfish. Amen. Uh, I ain't going to say most, I'll say a lot. Yeah. Amen. A lot of folks, even those who are in the body of Christ, are selfish. Some of them are some of the meanest people who call themselves believers and won't have mercy on another person when they are found in fault or they have a flaw that's seen or a fallacy, but let them have something go wrong. Let their flaw come out. Let a bone fly out of their claw. And then they want all the mercy in the world. Oh, forgive me, you know that that's just something that's one of my faults. But if you have a fault, some folks would put you in hell if they could. So the Bible says he's rich in mercy. And I, I just saw a few stories in the Bible that reminded me of how rich in mercy he really is. Uh, uh, because in baseball, thank you, Holy Ghost, when I played baseball, we had what was known as the mercy rule. And the mercy rule was if you got 10 runs above your opponent and they get the score in the next at bat, the game will be over. So if we score, which we used to do that to guys sometimes, and the team scored 11 or 12 runs in one inning, that team had to score more than enough runs so that they wouldn't be down by 10. And if it went a whole nother inning and they didn't score, the game was called for mercy rule. And the mercy rule was so that little boys' self-esteem wouldn't be torn down because they wouldn't feel so embarrassed and humiliated not realizing this is only one game. Even if it was the playoffs or the championship, it's still only one game. And so therefore, if you lost that bad, we want to stop this now, as we say, and stop the bleeding. So therefore, the next game you realize, 
That was last game. This is a new game. What happened then don't have to happen again. And so we thank God for the mercy rule being instituted so that that way we can walk away and say we got another day and we coming back again. And they made sure we understood the mercy rule. So if you put it on some people and put them into the mercy rule, you didn't go past them over celebrating and over teasing and taunting. We would talk sportsmanship. I don't know what they do nowadays. But we would talk sportsmanship. Some have it, some don't. And I thank God for mercy because even the Bible says he shows mercy to whomever he chooses to. So ain't no need to get mad when you see God's favor and mercy on somebody else's life. It means you got to get in right relationship with him. Right standing relationship so you can receive the full grace and mercy that he wants to extend. Because see, everybody receives some mercy. Amen. Everybody receives some of God's grace because the Bible says it rains on the just as well as the unjust. So that's why bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people. Amen. Because God is a sovereign God. Amen. But he's rich in mercy. And I saw a few Amen. stories that let us know how compassionate he was even in the Bible. You remember the story of the two blind men in Matthew chapter 9. They, they, blind Bartimaeus and his buddy. They were, they were sitting on the roadside waiting. And Jesus, they missed them going into Jericho, but they caught him on the way out. And what they said is, Jesus, have mercy on, on us. See, they, they were kind enough to say us, and yet selfish enough to say me. Not that they didn't want the partner to get it too, but thank you, Holy Ghost, you got to speak up for yourself. Amen. <laughs> There's some requests you've been making and asking somebody else to pray for you. Holy Ghost just told me to tell you, you got to ask him for yourself. Because when you stand in the eternal judgment line, nobody will be able to stand for you. Yes. Mama, daddy, sister, brother, uncle, auntie, pastor included. I can't stand in your place. I have to give an account for myself. Amen. And I got to give an account of my own personal stewardship and that of me pastor in the church. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You're going to have to give an account for your own life. And so therefore, these blind men hollered out, Jesus, have mercy on us. Yeah. Lord, they called him the son of David. They knew who he was. And so they said, have mercy on us. And when he didn't, they followed him into the house. Because they said, we're going to get our blessing. We're we not going to stop. We're going to get our blessing. We, we want to get healed. And that's what the Lord is telling me to tell somebody. You want mercy, then press your way to get the mercy. Yeah. Push your way to get the mercy. Uh -huh. Press in to get his mercy. Yeah. There's two more blind men, I believe, in Matthew chapter 20. Mm -hmm. Once again, you had two blind men who pressed their way. They're the ones, thank you for those, who went into the house with him. And they went in the house because Jesus didn't answer them when he, they said, Lord, have mercy on us. It seemed like they, he was ignoring them. And he wasn't ignoring them. He simply waited to see if they were going to press their way. They, that was it right there. They pressed their way because they followed him into the house saying, we're not going to let you go until you bless us. And so therefore, they knew. They said, son of David, Lord, have mercy on us. And so therefore, they had mercy on them. Jesus had mercy on them. Because of that fact, they knew what to do. And so they called on the Lord, and he showed them mercy. You remember the Syrophoenician woman? When she came looking for Jesus, she came and fell in worship. She said, have mercy on me, Lord. My daughter is vexed, sorely vexed with the devil. And Jesus told her yeah. after he said to her, I, I, I'm not supposed to do this because you are not even a part of Israel. And yet he went ahead and did it for her. Uh -huh. Told her because of your faith, go with your daughter. And she found out when she got home, her daughter had been healed. At the same time, Jesus said, because of your faith. He said, I ain't seen so great a faith in all of Israel. And so she, she, she saw and he showed us that he was having mercy on us. Yeah. I think it was 10 lepers. Yeah. 
that also saw him from afar. Uh -huh. Son of David, have mercy on us. And the lepers knew that they couldn't get close to him. You got an advantage because you can get close to Jesus. You can get close to him right now. And so therefore they cried out, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. Yeah. And he, he, he said, what you want? They, they, they asked for their healing. Uh -huh. And I'm paraphrasing that literally he told them, go show yourself to the priest. Yes. And on the way, the healing came. Yes, sir. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Some healing, some deliverance uh -huh. comes through obedience immediately. You can't question God. You can't doubt God. You just got to move out right then and there and do exactly what he says to do. Yeah. It might seem strange. It might be funny. But you got to do exactly what the Lord tells you to do. Yeah. At the exact moment he tells you to do it. It might sound crazy to you. But that's just like how our God works. He's not going to do it the conventional way. Uh -huh. I shared that with you a few weeks ago, that he does things unconventionally, yeah. and he does it on purpose to yeah. see if we will follow through with what he said to do. Uh -huh. And that's what we got to learn to do, to follow through exactly with what God says, when he says, don't hesitate, don't procrastinate, don't remonstrate, just move out and do what God told you to do. Oh, and I'm getting ready to leave you now. Thank you, Jesus. And since these four cases of the Lord showing mercy, he wanted you to see that the old season saints taught us when you don't know what else to say. <laughs> say the have mercy on me. That's a whole lot to say. <laughs> Even in one prayer. Lord, have mercy on me. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody in the room need a little more mercy? Anybody in the room? Need a little more grace. You ought to be able to say, Lord, have mercy on me. Even when I don't know that I need your mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. I've fallen short of your glory. Lord, have mercy on me. I didn't do everything you told me to do. Lord, have mercy on me. Maybe I'm the only one that falls short sometimes. But I still have to tell him, Lord, have mercy on me. Even when I think I got everything right, I still say, Lord, have mercy on me. I still thank him because I try to show my fellow man mercy, y'all. And we got to start doing more of it as the body of Christ. Show God's mercy. Show his compassion. Oh, thank you, Lord. Because he shows us mercy every single day. And I thank you, Lord, that you keep on giving us another chance. That he doesn't quit on us. He doesn't forsake us. He doesn't walk away from us like our friends will, like family members will. When we mess up, 
All we have to do is fess up. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your great mercy. I wake up, and your mercy is right there. I think the psalmist said, in the 23rd number of Psalms, surely your goodness and your mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That means I got good twins following me. Thank you, Lord, for those twins. Goodness and mercy, which is grace and mercy. Elder, they follow us around day in and day out. Your mercy has kept me out of jail. Your mercy has kept me from hell. Your mercy has got me out of situations along with grace that I know I shouldn't have been in. I got any witnesses in the room. No, you made it home when you had too much to drink. Got too high. But God's grace and mercy ah, drove you home. You found yourself in your driveway or in front of your house. Maybe y'all too safe for that. But maybe you party and got left. Maybe you had to walk home late at night in the dark. Grace and mercy was following you all the way. Say It was his mercy <laughs> that allowed him to die for us. Ah, his compassion, they fail us not. Thank you, Lord. Ah, thank you, Lord. Ah, thank you, Lord. For 61 years of grace and mercy, keeping tap church. Can we say hallelujah? Hallelujah! Glory! Ah, glory! Ah, glory! Ah, glory! Glory to your name! Glory to your name! Glory to your name! We celebrate you, Jesus, for 61 years. Father, we celebrate you in Holy Ghost. For 61 years. Thank you. Ah, thank you, Lord. Ah, thank you, Lord. Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ah, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You did it for them. And you keep on doing it for us. Over and over. Ah, over and over again. You keep on blessing us. Every time we turn around. Your grace. And your mercy. Ah, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Woo! I thank you, Lord. I feel like celebrating. 61 years. Thank you, sir. 61 years. They said we wouldn't make it. Said we wouldn't be here. Said we wasn't going to amount to nothing. Thank you, 
you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We can't see it. Sometimes we don't know how. But your grace <laughs> and your mercy, they're twins of yours. They keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on following in this. Thank God that I got some. I got my own secret service agent. <laughs> a supernatural secret service. <laughs> and they follow us around. <laughs> They've been put on detail. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost, for the detail. <laughs> Trying to leave y'all alone. Thank you, Lord, for those, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. I'm living this moment ah, because, ah, because, ah, because of you. So I want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace, your grace and mercy, ah, it brought me through. Got any other witnesses out here? Yeah, yeah. That grace and mercy yeah, yeah. brought you through. Yeah, yeah. Somebody say yeah. 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 I'm done. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Trying to leave it alone. But when I think of his goodness, and all he's done to me, my Thank you, thank you, Lord.